Okay, so in this problem we're told two blocks, each of mass m, are attached to the ends of a massless rod which pivots as shown in the figure. Initially the rod is held in the horizontal position and then released. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the net torque on this system when it is first released. So what we have here is this rod with two masses, right? And they're both going to have a mass m. And they're both going to be different distances away from uh, basically this point. And so we know this point is going to be or this distance is L1, uh, this distance is L2, right? And so this is going to be the point of rotation. So we know it's going to rotate uh, either like this or like this. And so uh, what we're trying to find here is the net torque. So the way we find the net torque, right? So you can say torque net is basically we're going to be adding up the different torques acting on our system. So we know there's going to be two instances of torque, right? Torque is going to be caused by this mass and this mass. And so generally when you do... Uh, a, a rotational problem like this, you like to take your clockwise. So imagine it rotating. Clockwise is going to be positive, right? And then counterclockwise would be negative. So when we add up these torques, if if uh, the torque, right? So if the thing that's going to be causing the torque is going to make it go counterclockwise, we make it negative. And if it's going uh, clockwise, we make it positive. Therefore, so let's call this uh, T1, right? or let's call this T2 actually. Now let's call this T1, right? So the torque due to this length one and then the torque due to this mass with length two. And so we know this is gonna be equal to T2 minus T1, right? Because we're just adding them up, but notice T1 is gonna make it go counterclockwise. Therefore we do minus because it's negative, right? Because it's going counter while this one's positive because it's going clockwise. And so now what we need to do is solve for T1 and T2. So we know the formula for torque is RF times the sine of theta, where R is the distance from the point of rotation, uh, which is L2 for T2 and L1 for T1. Uh, and the force in this case is going to be the force due to gravity, right? Because this has some mass, so it's going to pull it with some, uh, the force due to gravity, right? Which is just equal to uh, mg for both of them, right? Because they have the same mass m, and then the force due to gravity is just its mass times g. So uh, yeah, so that's the force. Sine of theta is the angle between the lever arm, right, and the basically the distance between, or the angle between that and the lever arm. So the force and the lever arm. So the lever arm uh, is where it's connected. So we know this is the lever arm, and then the force is going to act straight down. Therefore, the angle between them is going to be 90 degrees, right? So this is for both of them. So the force actually, or obviously, acts straight down, the force due to gravity. And so it's the angle between the lever arm, where your length is and the force. So for both of them, it's 90 degrees. So uh, you should know the sine of 90 is just 1. Therefore, in this case, uh, since that is, it's really just uh, R or the length, we'll just call it L times F. So it's just L times F for both of them. So uh, let's just start with T1. So T1 is uh, the length, right? But in this case, the length is L1 multiplied by the force, which I said was mg before. Uh, and then the sine of theta, we're not going to write because it's just uh, 1. So for T2, it's the same thing, except for we're just using a different distance, right? So the net torque in this case is going to be equal to, right, just writing them out, T2, L2, Mg, minus L1, Mg. And so uh, you can just rewrite this as L2, right? I'm just factoring out the L1 and L2. L1, or I'm just factoring out the Mg, sorry. So you have L2 minus L1 times Mg. That's going to be your net torque. So your answer to this problem, the magnitude of it is L2 minus L1 times mg. So that's your magnitude. Now, when they talk about the direction, let's think about this for a second. So we know the torque for L2 is going to be greater. Now, now why is that? Well, we know, as I said before, it's equal to L1 or mg is going to be the same, uh, say the same. So the only thing changing these torques is their distance. Uh, but it's evident to see L2 is just way greater than L1. Therefore, uh, the torque due to this two, right? So the mass two is going to be much greater. So if the torque is greater in this direction, we know it's going to go in this way, right? It's going to go, it's going to go clockwise, not counterclockwise, since this torque is greater, right? And you can see that when you do this, you're going to get a positive value. And so positive obviously indicates, as I said before, clockwise direction. So we know it's going to go clockwise is the direction. So just keep that in mind since this distance here is greater, the moment is greater. So uh, yeah, it's going to rotate. Uh, clockwise. So uh, this is going to be your answer here. So 
magnitude and direction. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And just quick rundown. So just to sum up the torque, you just uh, right, you just add them up. But since this one's negative, uh, right, since it's going counterclockwise, you choose it to be negative. And then it's really just a matter of plugging in the formulas and uh, solving. So pretty simple. And uh, yeah, so these are your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.